We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. We really do appreciate everything you're listening ears. Want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going on to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. It is time once again where we head into the UFO world. The unbiased UFO report. John Hudson is here. He's got his black Stetson on, as he does every time. And we absolutely love it when John is here to break down the latest UFO news. And tonight, we're going to get into the AIAA Aviation Conference. Was there some UFO talk at this aviation conference, John? Not only UFO talk, but very uh, sane, um, pragmatic, serious UFO talk. And uh, you know, I want to I want to give a nod uh, to Chris Plain over at the the debrief. He he wrote a great article on this that I'll, I'll link uh, on Twitter after this. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there was some. First off, there was some good representation. There were people from um, you know from several different organizations, several people that we know. And um, and what was cool was that, you know, there were some very serious issues tackled and essentially Chris calls out five of them. And I just wanted to bring out a couple points about a couple of them that I think, you know, people would like to, to hear about. But um, it was just it was really great to hear how how methodical and I mean, just be, I mean, it sounds silly, but scientific they were about it. Right. And which is which is what we want. Right. Um, so the first thing that was very clear was that there was a there was a. a fairly uniform agreement among the the six you know presenters and, and so forth that ufos are real and they represent a real risk to aviation which is a is a is a pretty you know a, a good steady statement to to begin to the note of this conference on and but one of the things that nearly every presenter brought up was the challenge they have with the stigma and how it keeps them from getting researchers to get involved it 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 hampers their own confidence in sharing information it it, it, it's it's still it's getting better it's getting much much better but it's still doing harm and you know just a quick personal story i i've made this friend on a on a discord channel and i honestly i I talk to this guy all the time we we've shared things about our 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 psychological problems that we've had you know growing up and i don't know his name i don't know where he works i don't know what state he works in because he's a physicist, he's a uh, Ivy League trained physicist, and he works at somewhere where his name matters. And he cannot tell anyone who he is because he's afraid it'll impact his ability to get grants. And that's that's crap. I mean, that just sucks because he's actually doing good work. He's written his own software interface for pouring through um, uh, UFO data. I mean, he's actually doing research on UFO data and he can't share it with anyone because he can't let his name get out. It's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's, it's incredibly frustrating. Um, I can see that. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's incredibly, incredibly frustrating. And, and, and for him, he has trouble even getting data because the, a lot of people won't give out data to anonymous people and he can't even give his name out when he asks for data. So, so that's how careful he has to be, and and I don't think he's being paranoid. I, I think I think he understands the environment he's in. And is he is he an experiencer or is he just someone who has a real interesting take on this subject? That I don't know yet. That my my assumption is he saw something at some point. Um, you know, um, most of us have. Um, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, it, I, I don't know that for sure. I don't know that for sure. Right. Um, I tell you one thing though, he's a big fan of this show. Um, oh, cool. But, um, well, hello, uh, whoever you are. <laughs> um, so, uh, so the other thing they went into is that, you know, and, and we're hearing this all over the place. We're hearing this right now from Eric Weinstein at the, um, at the conference going on this week. We need more data. We need better data. We need clean data. 
right? Uh, and because we need data that can actually be worked on. And this means that you can't take data from a, a military camera and clean it for classified information and then turn it over. It's useless at that point. And so, you know, so there's a, the universal clamoring for, for more and cleaner data. And so, you know, the, the questions that I have are, are things like, well, does the Galileo project eventually step in there considering the fact that they're using off the shelf equipment and that see, data won't be held by anyone? Does see, this, step this, this, in? This, Where this does it come from? This is part of my argument. Okay. We keep saying we need more data. We need more data. I don't think we need more data. I think what we need is a United States government and governments around the world to come clean with what they do have. All right. Whether or not there's a reason, my friend, and if you read between the lines, there is a reason that report, the DNI report, did not go back past 2004. All yeah. right. I yeah. think we can all agree Lawyers. with that. We don't need any more data. We have enough experiential uh, topics. We have enough data with videos and eyewitness testimony. We have enough science behind it. What we need is the government to release what they have, but more so what they know. Now, we know that's never going to happen, John. We know that. However, it's time that we start pushing for that. I'm so sick of the data argument and where's the proof? Show me the proof. Well, you but know. the thing is, is, it, is it, I don't think what they're saying is we have to get new data. I think what they're saying is in align what you're saying. They're either saying, hey, release the data you have. Release the data you've been collecting all this time, right? Or give us new. They don't really care where the data comes from, right? But essentially, right now, you have a bunch of scientists that now suddenly want to start working on this problem, and they can't work on it without without data. And And so whether it's new data or whether it's old data, um, it's very hard to get. I mean, I started looking into this recently, and it is incredibly hard to get any data. I mean, to get any data get at all. That. I mean, even Cheryl's stuff is all is all in, in in her proprietary database. I can't I can't get a data dump on that and put it into my own database and start chewing. No, on I it. I understand that. I understand that. But John, there's 70 years of data. Okay, granted, data. You know, you know, like I, yeah, there's 70 years of data. We hope. Right. I mean, it's like you and I, it, it, you I mean, and I, I will I, agree I, to this, my friend. You no, and no. I will agree I, I don't, on that. I don't, I don't disagree that it was collected at points, but I don't, I don't, I don't have any confidence that it'll ever be accessible. I, that I agree with you. That I agree with you. Uh, you know, and I don't know if UPAX uh, is the group to do it. I hope they are because Gary Voorhees and Kevin Day in that group, they, those are good people. Those are good, honest people. I have zero. Uh, interest in Skyhub, considering that both Bob McGuire and Steve McDaniel are no longer involved. I think it's a it, it's a it's a dead project that's still going on the name and reputation, quick reputation that it built. And uh, I know somebody who's hawking it. Don't trust that person at all. So I, I think that's a dead project there. That's that. That's that, I had heard similar rumors that I was hoping weren't true. So, um, so that's that's really unfortunate to hear. I had a lot of hope for Skyhub, uh, but anyway. So the point was was that you had people clamoring for more data. But I, I will say, as a funny side note, Eric Weinstein, this other conference, is saying, you know, read us in, read us in. We need this data, and it's 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 kind of a funny situation because I don't think that a lot of these physicists realize what they would be giving up if they got read in, uh, what what impact it has on their life. To become read in, um, and so uh, you know, I think some people don't know exactly what they're asking for, but we'll see how that goes. Um, so uh, you know, when it comes to you know, scientists, you know, need to be the ones getting into this and rising to the occasion. You know, we can go back and forth on that. I don't think everyone agrees, but what was interesting was was a gentleman named um, uh, Peter uh, uh, Reali. Uh, I may be mispronouncing his last name. Um, went over his calculations, and many of us have seen these before. Of you know, based on the rough estimates that we got from from the Nimitz uh, encounter, how much energy would it take to perform that activity? And uh, you know, in, in light of time, I won't I won't read this, but I'll, I'll post this, these quotes later. But what he really comes down to is that you would need about um, 1.05 kilotons of TNT, or essentially a tactical nuclear weapon. That that's a basically how much energy was used for a for a a, a vessel to go from twenty eight thousand feet to fifty feet in less than a second. 
And we didn't see anything like that. We didn't see any of that energy output in any sort of way, which means it was all consumed and it was efficiently, efficiently used. And that's almost as important as it is that that much energy was required. The fact that they could generate that much energy and use it on a whim. They weren't getting chased. They weren't in danger. They, they, they were just hanging out and they were able to expend that much energy just to do what essentially was for them tooling around a parking lot, right? They, they weren't chasing food. They weren't fleeing a, a foe. They were just dropping in to check something out. And they were able to drop that much energy to do that on a whim. And it was all used efficiently with no nothing emitting from that vehicle at all. Amazing. That's astounding. It That's is amazing. Astounding. It's astounding. Uh, and then the last the last note that uh, that I, I was happy that uh, Chris made was that um, Ryan Graves really stood out as a as a significant voice uh, in that in that conference, um, specifically talking about, you know, what he saw, where he thinks it poses a risk, where he thinks it doesn't pose a risk. And uh, I haven't had a chance to go over everything he said, but I think what a lot of it comes down to is, is that if you if you completely ignore them, they're not a risk because they're not really going to intentionally crash into you. However, if a pilot is surprised or a pilot is shocked or a pilot is, is made uh, it, you know, fearful for their situation and they make evasive maneuvers, then we really could have some very, very serious issues. Right. And, and I could see that. And, and I appreciate that. Let's move on to the next topic here tonight, my friend. John Hudson with the unbiased UFO report here on Spaced Out Radio. And this one, let's go over to Fox News because, yes. you know, love or hate Fox News, love or hate Tucker Carlson. And I got to admit, as a journalist, I'm not the biggest fan of his. All right. I think he's very condescending at times, but that's for another argument. Mm -hmm. Where I will give him credit for is he is really the only journalist, mainstream journalist out there on big name television that will not give up on the UFO subject. Hmm. He is not waiting weeks or months in between stories for something else to drop. He wants to investigate what is going on. And he's got another report coming out, which I think is fantastic. Tell us about it. Yeah. So basically, um, it, it, it is, uh, it is out. It's behind the paywall. Um, I was able to, to watch it today. Um, you know, it, for any of us that are, are, have been researching this for any length of time, it, there's nothing new in the report. Um, but it's a, it's a really nice, it's about, I think it's about 20, I think this first edition is like 28 minutes and it's a very nice overview of, of what's going on, of, of the, you know, the seriousness of what's going on. Um, he has, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, several people on as, as guests and so forth. But the one thing that I will give him credit for is he only appears in the very beginning of it and the very end of it. He stays out of it. it, it it's really about the topic. And, and so I, once again, I, I, I agree with you. I'm not, a, I'm not, you know, necessarily a huge fan of him in, in general senses, but I applaud him for his effort. And, but I also think it's an interesting statement because what you have is you have the number one rated cable news presenter, right? Is, is last I saw was, was last I checked was Tucker. And this is a man that is not, um, um, uh, uh, missing any of his ego, right? He, he's a very, very confident uh, a presenter. And that's what he needs to be the one doing this. Everyone else isn't saying anything because they essentially don't feel safe enough to do so. He does feel safe enough to do so. And so I think it's a glaring statement as to what the state is of, 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 the, of the broadcast news because everyone else is still too nervous to sink their teeth into this. He's the one that's cocky enough to actually do it. And I applaud him for it. And I think he's doing it in a, in a fairly um, uncocky, un-Tucker-focused un, un way. I think he's actually trying really hard to treat it with seriousness. And I applaud him for that. No, I, I think that's great. I absolutely think that's great. And good on him for keeping the topic going. I wish he would take a deeper dive in rather than the same people he is listening to, whether it's Nick Pope, Lou Elizondo, Chris Mellon, or anybody of that ilk. I would love to see him get into some serious conversations with some maybe not as well-known public, publicly researchers. I would love to see him meet with Cheryl Costa. I would love to see him meet with Grant Cameron or, or Richard Dolan and, and see how that goes. Well, what's right? funny is it's actually titled Tucker Carlson's Deep Dive. 
uh, into the UFO, which is kind of so. I'm I'm hoping that there's going to be more segments um, where he dives into it more. Um, and this wasn't a bad one. This was a pretty good segment. I you know I, I would consider it you know um, more on par with what um, what Ross what Ross uh, Col- uh, Colthart did um, compared to everything else we've seen. So it's 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 definitely worth checking out. All right, and finally, well, no, you know what? We're going to keep it right there, buddy. No we're worries, gonna keep, We're going to keep it right there, and and uh, let's get to the news. John can stick around if he wants. The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR News Wire. At the back end of every show, we get to the weird, the strange, the wacky, and sometimes downright idiot. Big Mac or Big Tat? A South Carolina man is accused of tattooing a child inside of a McDonald's last Friday. Brandon Presha was arrested Tuesday after police became aware of a video in which a juvenile was being inked. Investigators determined Pressure was an unlicensed tattoo artist and that the person getting tattooed was underage. Police Chief Chrissy Lattimore stated she said it appeared the tattooing was done in the dining area of the restaurant. Hopefully the location is keeping up with its sanitation protocols. Otherwise, kind of gross. Would you like some McInk with your McFries and your Big Mac? I don't know. Despite not being licensed, the kid looked pretty comfortable applying the ink. Yeah, that being said, pretty disgusting display. The child gets ink, this man gets arrested, and just not all around good time at McDonald's. Here's an interesting one. You know, I love stories like this. A billionaire software company CEO has given a former hermit in New Hampshire $180,000 to rebuild his cabin in a new location. Alexander Karp, CEO of Planeteer Technologies, gave David Lidstone a personal check last week. Lidstone's friend, Jody Gideon, said on Facebook, a spokesperson for the data analytics software company, confirmed the donation. How can I ever express myself and my gratitude towards something like this? I start to tear up whenever I think about it, Lidstone said. For an old logger who always worked hard for anyone to give you that type of money, it's incredibly difficult for me to get my head around. There's been an outpouring of support for Lidstone since he was jailed on July 15th and accused of squatting for nearly 30 years on property owned by a Vermont man. His cabin burned down this month shortly before his release, but he recently secured temporary housing through the winter. The location is being kept secret to protect Lidstone's privacy, Gideon said, but supporters will have a chance to meet Lidstone at a thank you event in Warner, New Hampshire this coming weekend. That's real nice. All right. Shortly after departure from New York on May 24th, my birthday, and not me, the story isn't about me, a JetBlue passenger, not me, was accused of throwing his carry-on luggage, lying down in the aisle and refusing to get up and grabbing a flight attendant by the ankles and sticking his head up her skirt. Yeah, the pervert was restrained by the crew with zip ties The plane made an emergency landing in Richmond, Virginia, where he was removed. Now he's up for a $45,000 fine by the FAA. Good for him. The JetBlue passenger was just one of 34 against whom the FAA proposed fines against on Thursday for a total of $531,545, bringing the total of 2021 to more than $1 million in fines. And finally tonight, An Apple II computer manual signed by company co-founder Steve Jobs in 1980 has sold for $787,000, make that $787,484, a Boston-based auction house announced. RR Auctions said the 196-page manual, which features the technical specifications and operations instructions for the Apple II computer, was signed by Jobs and Mark McCullough, the second CEO of Apple in 1980. Julian, your generation is the first to grow up with computers. Go change the world, Jobs wrote on the inside of the manual cover. (laughs) 
Thought of the day happens every night at this time where we ask a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages, then read your responses on the air because we love the audience participation around here. Today's thought of the day is as follows. Who's going to win in a free-for-all if the gloves were dropped between Dogman and Sasquatch? Who are you cheering for? Who are you going with? Start off with Paul. Sasquatch. Always Sasquatch. Plus, Dogman doesn't exist. If they did exist, we would see way more track evidence than we do with Sasquatch. Oh, that wasn't very like Paul. You got to keep your mind open. That's an opinion, not research. Alex, we do. We win because there will be DNA all over the place. Daryl's going for Sasquatch for sure. Catherine, in a world where two species never to be discovered battled it out in a fight to win the hide-and-seek champion of the forest, starring that big brown guy who smells really badly but no one can find, and co-starring a dog that's willing to eat your leftover picnic scraps in a fight for the title of champion, who will win? Nobody knows where to find them to figure this out. Joshua, Sasquatch is the heavyweight champion of all cryptids, with Mothman coming in second. Penman, is this a rhetorical question or just repetitive, Dave? How about just in fun, Penman? Write it out. Gene, Sasquatch, duh. Magnus, I lay all my chips out for Dogman, but I think the better question is, who wins in a battle between Sasquatch, Dogman, and Chad Smith? That's it for tonight. Thank you, everyone, for participating in the Thought of the Day. We will do it all again very, very soon. Big thank you to Captain Shirk for the SOR Newswire. Nate Foote and Gary Spikes Jr. talking Bigfoot all night long. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone checking out our chat rooms tonight. YouTube, LGAB, Revolution Radio, Spreaker, Twitch, and Twitter. This show has been copyrighted by Space Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us because together, my friends... We own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes, the Wu train has docked for the night. But soon, my friends, we shall ride again. Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, yep, we've got room for them, too. Good night. It's good stuff. Wait two seconds, Johnny. You're up. <clears throat> Oh man, that was fun. No, that was a good. That was a good show, man. That was a. <clears throat> you know, and I really liked what Gary said because you know what most people don't realize, and, and there's actually been some good studies on this now, is that you know you, you take someone who's had some traumatic event, whether it's a uh, you know uh, you know a sexual event, a violent event, or whatever, and you, then you look at how their trusted circle reacted to them mm -hmm. once they reported it. And mm -hmm. what you will find is that the way those people reacted to them in many cases will do significantly more harm to them mm -hmm. than the original event actually did. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it, you know, the original event is one thing. Now this is an opportunity for them to now lose faith in their trusted circle. So I now agree. they've damaged all of their relationships. Right. And yeah. the wounding from that is 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 because the person that hurt them is is a nobody right like there's no you mm -hmm. know i mean usually like you know there's no personal connection whereas now they have the people they went to for help turning on them 
uh, it, it's mm-hmm. people don't realize how, how much harm they can do. I mean, it's really, Hey bud, I'll be right back. Okay. You can chat yeah. with the audience for a couple of minutes. Yeah. It's all good. Are you all familiar with the, the that painting of dogs playing poker? So I, I was looking this up because I was thinking about taking one and 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 trying to like uh, put in like you know like all these different creatures like you know Mothman and and Bigfoot and so forth. I had no idea it was a whole series. There's actually uh, sixteen oil paintings of like all these different dogs playing all these different games. I had no idea it was actually such an involved topic. All right, data. I, I uh, bear with me. I I might just be sleepy, but uh, what is a telegram? I assume it's some sort of a of a blog post somewhere, certain app. Or did you mean Instagram and it and it uh, it. Uh, corrected your language in the wrong way all right i'll I'll look i'll I'll look it up so you meant on the whole um damage that it does to people when they they react badly to things is that what you were referring to i assume you weren't referring to the dogs playing poker Gotcha. Cool. No, I will. I'll check it out. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how many of you are, are aware of how um, of how standards work uh, on the internet, but um, there's this organization called the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, um, that I've been involved in for about ten years, and I've been a uh, uh, <laughs> no dogs um, that I've been involved in. I've been a, a working group chair. I, I've I've held different roles in the organization, and and we're the group that does the standards for the internet. Like basically, like actually, it's one of our groups that's responsible for why everyone had to type HTTP, you know, colon slash slash. That was actually one guy's fault. And uh, and there's a an encryption group um, that uh, where all the encryption standards come out. Um, and uh, like, you know, SSL and uh, HTTPS and all that jazz. And um, for uh, for a long number of years, um, usually there's, there's most groups, there's two co-chairs. Occasionally there's three. And the encryption group had three for a long time. And one of the members, one of the co-chairs of it was actually an NSA employee. Um, very nice gentleman. Uh, I spoke to him on multiple occasions. And... Um, uh, there was some there was some weird stuff that went on a couple times, and um, you know, um, you know, I, I I guess the point I'm trying to make is that um, you know, um, always realize that no matter how well encrypted you think your communications are, if someone has enough money and they care enough, they will find some way around it. So you know, just just keep that in mind because. Um, it, it scares me sometimes the amount of faith people put into um, into encryption protocols. Um, there, there's there's always some way around it. Um, it's uh, it's it's amazing how how often that happens. Um, sorry, totally unrelated topic, but it just made me think of it because you posted about that being a an encrypted um, social media site. Yeah, no, it basically, um, a- any device that you have where data comes out of it, so, you know, whatever that device is, any any device you have where data comes out of it, at least, at l- minimum, five countries have made a copy of all that data. And they might not go through it now. They might not scan it now. They might just store it for later. But um, all that data is is being copied by at least at least five different countries, 
probably significantly more like that, more than that. I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of what a BGP hijack is, but I mean, there have been times where essentially like, like a third of the internet's traffic has been rerouted to one location for like six hours. And that location just slurped it all down and then it gets fixed and everything goes back to normal and no one knows what's going on. And meanwhile, that, that location's recorded all that data. It's actually really terrifying. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. Yourself? Good. You having fun? Oh yeah, yeah. I want to. No, I no, want to no. get. I want to get to uh, Justin's question here, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Please. Uh, Justin showed some concerns about my uh, newfound dislike for ufology, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, Justin. Um, we're not going to stop covering ufology on this show. It's a huge part of what we do. We're going to continue to bring people on. Uh, my decision is more behind the scenes with what is going on. I don't like uh, I don't like the politics. I don't like the 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 crap. I'm going to use the word crap that I see happening behind the scenes. I'm not accusing anybody of, uh, you know, playing shenanigans or anything like that. In the end, there's a lot, in, an incredibly amount of good people who are working in this field and are trying to get the answers out, whether it's scientifically or whether it's through experiences. My whole frustration with it all is um, <clears throat> when it comes to this show, you know, I think at times, and, and there might be people who disagree with me, but I think at times there are people who, who unknowingly abuse what we do on this show on a nightly basis. And <clears throat> I, I'm one of these people where I never say, I rarely ever say no. Okay. I'm always there to help. I'm always there to trust me. I, I'm just editing the show as I chat with you here. So pardon my multitasking. Uh, I'm always there to say, Hey, we'll give a hand. If somebody calls me up and says, Hey, we got a conference going on. You know what? I'm always there to say, yeah, we'll interview some people talking about your conference. We'll do that. Not a problem. We'll give you some plugs. Why not? You know, but after years and years of doing, and this is just a small example, after years and years of doing that, when my phone never rings for a conference, my phone never rings for a television show, my phone never rings for, my phone rarely, rarely rings for an interview. I, I have done a couple recently. All right. I will make time for those things. I really, I really do. But when you're showing the UFO world love and they're not showing you the love back, at some point you have to put your foot down. There are conferences. I, I get hit up all the time. Can you, uh, can you play our conference? Can you, can you promote our conference? And I'll be like, sure, not a problem. Right. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question, Dave. Yeah. Like, so, so first off, I'll, I'll just make my personal comment. I thought actually your one-on-one. -on -one, I'll be honest. I was a little worried about your one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, I, I was a little worried about how, uh, you know, how how the venting would come off. And and I actually think you did a great job. I think you did a really good job of playing the line and and expressing how you felt without it coming off as as super negative. I actually I I got more negativity from the end of the um the uh celebrity um god now you know i can never remember what it's called now either um the the the, the celebrity review um uh podcast you were on uh, toward the end when you were talking about things that to me sounded a little more down and a little more frustrated than than i thought your one-on-one -on -one did but i've been thinking a lot about what you're what you've been describing right because you know i i'm i've come to this decision uh at this point in my life where a lot of what I used to subscribe to malice and to, um, you know, poor behavior was often due to 
much more mundane things that I just didn't realize at the time. And so I've been trying to think of like other things that could be causing what you're seeing, right? Because I agree that what, what you're describing is a problem. I'm just, I'm wondering, you know, to me, it just seems like I'm missing. I just, I feel like I'm missing something. Like there's a data point I'm missing to, to make this make more sense. And two things that, I, that I, I thought of that I wanted your opinion on was one is that um, if you think about it, what you're describing is a lot like what happens in the financial uh, world at a government level with um, with financial classes, where the the rich get a tremendous amount of attention because of the power they have. The poor get a tremendous amount of attention because of the need they have. And the middle class gets squeezed. And it's because they're not doing badly, so people don't really feel as safe giving them things. Whereas it's really, everyone feels safe giving stuff to poor people, but like giving stuff to middle class people, people don't feel safe doing that because they're like, do they really need it? And, but they don't have the power or the authority or the control that the rich people have. And so they end up in this horrible position where no one helps them. No one invites them up the chain of command. No one pushes them down, but they kind of get ignored and, and just left to, to rot. And, and this is one of the reasons why middle classes often get squeezed. And so part of it is, you know, is, is, there, is, there, is there an aspect of just um, normal human behavior that might be ascribed to some of this? Oh, oh very, very much could be, you know, because here's, here's the big thing. I don't want people to think that I'm whining or complaining because I'm not. Okay. But in the end, SOR is a business. And in the end, I'm the face of that business. Lynn Wallington is now one of the new faces of the business. Gary's a face of the business. Gail is, and our behind-the-scenes team who does the booking is as well. And when you have a business and you, you have to stick up for it, right? And there's a lot of takers in this field. There's a lot of takers and not a lot of givers. And all well, those you're not just standing up for us, right? You're also standing up for other people in the field that are in a similar role, Absolutely. right? I mean, it's like, you know, th th this is a, th th there is a group, right? It's not just you. No, and, and that that's a, that's a good point there too. I don't want to make it sound like, hey, Swamp Dweller, how you doing, buddy? How you doing? I don't want to make it sound like it's all about what was Spaced Out Radio or what was Dave or what was Lynn. That's not my point. My my point is I'm I'm frustrated that when you when you bust your ass on a nightly basis trying to bring programming, and someone comes in and 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 drops another radio show on your channel and says this is what we're doing for this other radio show, that's a kick in the teeth. Well, especially that radio show that didn't doesn't need a lick of help. Right. I mean, it's like, um, you know, um, yeah, no, totally, totally. The, the, the other thing that I thought of is, um, is, you know, you know, you, you've talked about and I, I love the fact that you've talked about this. And it's one of the things that attracted me to your, your station in the beginning was that, you know, you didn't you didn't play this silo game. Right. You didn't play this silo game of, of only being about Bigfoot, of only being about UFOs, of only being about paranormal, of only being about this. And, you know, I get I, I've been shot for this several times, even pro, in my own professional career, in that I don't like to specialize. I don't I don't like to specialize. I like to I like to keep on top of several different things at the same time. I like parallelism. And so I like the fact that your station's always done that. And it's one of the things that attracted me to it. But we all know that there is still a bias among people in certain verticals about the other verticals. And so part of me wonders is if is it possible that you are seen as um, a less desirable uh, uh, station to partner with because of the fact that you're not pure? No, you're, you're, I don't, you're I don't think it's that at all. I, I, you know what? I sent something to Nicole Sackage today. All right. Sent something to Nicole Sackage. And I'm not going to say the person's name. All right, because that's not fair. This is an example of what I'm talking about. This person has been on this show over the years 20, 25 times. Okay. And I went to this person's YouTube channel because I'm really digging 
uh, the community aspect of YouTube channels. Okay. I think it's a good way to help out. And like, for instance, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to use swamp dweller here cause he's in a, he's in our chat room right now. And, uh, and I, I love his show. I love his channel. Uh, I don't think I can, uh, express that anymore. So what I did, because I want our listeners to see who I'm listening to, I added him to our community of channels. Yep. Whether he chooses to do that with us or not, that's really up to him because that's yep. his channel, you Absolutely. know. But this other person who I've had on the air about 25 times. Let me just say real quick, and we as listeners appreciate that too, because I just discovered Swamp Dweller because of what you did, and now I'm enjoying it, right? So yeah, it helps it, all of us. Isn't he great? Oh, yeah. I'm not, no, trying, awesome. not, not just saying that because he's in our room right now. No, no, totally. God no, no, damn, he's, it, he puts on a good but, show. But the, the community, like the community of hosters of, of of presenters, get benefit from it, but the listeners do as well. We get to find out about other content that we might really like, so it's it's good for absolutely, everybody. absolutely. And and the big thing is, you know, like this person who ha who has twenty five channels, he's got every podcast on on his community, except one. 25 times this person has been on my channel, including one that one show that completely threw this person under the bus and to this day throws this person under the bus. Still on that community. And we're not on there. So the way I look at it is, okay, do I talk to now? Now comes the difficult part. Do you talk to this person about it? Because you don't want to look like a jealous idiot, but you want to say, Hey, you know, like I bring you on the air all the time. I give you a lot of free reign to say whatever you want, however you want it. And yet you're not supporting us. So what's the story here? What's going on? Right. But you can't do that. Because you sound like a whiner, you sound like a pompous jerk. You well, sound and the thing is that I've I've had things like that happen where where it's happened with someone who I knew well, right? And so I was able to to really kind of play it play it play it in a in a joking way and just you know basically you know razz them about it, just be like, dude, like what you know what the f's up, right? Like you know, come on, man, like we're friends, and you know, I you, I'm not listed anywhere, you know, and. You know, whether they've been honest about this or not, but nine times out of 10, the response has been like, they've been shocked. Like they've been like, what, what, what do you mean? You're, you're really not on there, you know? And like yeah. they go look and they like, they uh, like uh, profusely apologize. Like, dude, I'm so sorry. I'll put you on right now. And so sometimes, and I don't know if they're being, if that's true. I, like, I don't know if they're just like playing it off. Um, I don't know if, if all the other people begged for it and, and, and that's why they got on and I didn't make a big deal out of it. And so maybe that's why they, there's also the reason why they didn't get included, but it, they were usually someone I knew enough where I could kind of play this kind of a joke and, and kind of razz them about it. And they would usually, you know, step up and take care of it. But, um, but you know, a lot of times you don't, you don't have that kind of relationship with people. And so it is, it, it can be incredibly awkward to bring that up. Well, it is. And in, in my choice, I'm kind of sheepish that way can't bring it up and point it out, you know, but what the whole point that I'm saying is this, you know, that's why I put up the dividers the, the other day. You have the young guns who take care of them. You have the old guard that takes care of them. And then you got the, like you said, the middle class where I think we fall into that category. And, you know, every day our subscribers are going up every day we are adding subscribers to this channel because we try and bring credibility and fun to this show. But at some point behind the scenes, and this is the point I'm trying to make for Justin. <clears throat> oh, thanks, Swamp Dweller. Appreciate that. Uh, wow. I want, please don't think that I was like trying to point things out for you, bro. That, that wasn't the point. Uh, I'm just a diehard fan of yours. Um, We're just trying to make you feel really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, uh, um, you know, the whole point that I'm getting at is, is at some point, 
the community has to has to support you back. You can't keep giving, 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 giving behind the scenes without the community giving back to you. This is why I have a lot of respect for Lorian Fenton. Okay, Lorian Fenton gave me my shot at speaking at a big conference. Uh, she's never said no to coming on this show. When she's invited me on her show, I've never said no. Um, <clears throat> you know, and uh, and that's you know, that's you know the kind I, of the point. Hey, Brutus, how you doing? You know, I kind of wondered, David. Is you know, I said to you at some point recently. I think we were talking on the phone. And I said, you know, one of the challenges is that because because you you came into this world with a with with a professional background like you did you 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 had a, a very clear idea of of how to build networks and how to build um, partnerships and so forth and so you've been kind of you kind of have kind of executing on this kind of basic basic a hypothesis of, of how it should work and it's not being reciprocated right and um and you know when you oft, when you often have communities that are that are starved, you know that they're they and they've been starved for a long time. Uh, a lot of people get into very kind of defensive mindsets, and it really harms the community aspect. And they have to really be shocked out of it to start, you know, reaching out and doing things. And that's not necessarily true here because you see them reaching out to other people. So maybe that's not necessarily the case. But the reason why I bring it up is that I think it'd be kind of interesting at one of these conferences that you do get invited to to propose doing a short talk on what it means to be part of the community. Like, like lay it out for people. Like what, what, like why would you want to be supportive of, of your fellow broadcasters? Why would, you know, what well, sort see, of things can you do? Right. Verbally like, actually, they all like, will lay it out for them. John verbally, they all will. Okay. Verbally, they all will, but it's, what is that next step? If I take somebody like Grant Cameron, who I absolutely love. Okay. There is someone who I would have never spoken in Toronto if it wasn't for Grant. Okay. Mm -hmm. I owe, I owe Grant a lot. All right. Grant, you know, Grant's quirky and Grant's, you know, everything, but he has, he does have a heart of gold, <clears throat> you know, um, Lori and Fenton, I think the same way, you know, but if you look at, this is why I love it when our booking team digs a little deeper to, uh, to find those, those people with great stories. Okay. And they dig a little bit deeper to find those personal interactions. Like what we heard from, from Gary tonight, to me, that is great radio. You know, I think, you know, I'll, I'll use swamp dweller again. If I had a radio station, if I had a radio station, I tell you right now from midnight till 6 a.m., I would be playing his stories. His, his stories, literally, do you remember, like, if you go, I, remember when you were a kid and your grandparents would be would be playing the radio in the background at night and they'd always have these old-time rickety radio station stories? Hey, Thurston Howell III, how's lovey? <clears throat> that's where a guy like, if I owned a radio station, that's where I would bring in a guy like Swamp Dweller to scare the living shit out of us each and every night with these creepy stories yep. that that he's putting together. Yep. Yep. And, and I'd love to see these 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 kind of guys evolve into more of what we used to get where you have multiple people doing multiple voices and it really becomes a bit of a theatrical thing. I think that'd be really cool for it to but, eventually evolve, evolve but into even that. Even doing it, even doing it. You know. Oh, it's it's awesome. I'm actually going to talk to my my guy Chuck about that. Because that's actually a good idea. That's actually yeah, a no. good idea. Yeah. No. 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 I mean, it's it's uh, it, it's it's so much fun. It, it's it's so much fun. And and you know, but you know, the other thing I will say that I, I think is kind of interesting is that you know, prior to you know, I mean, you know, we talked about you know this a little bit privately, you know, uh, ourselves, and and then you've been speaking about it uh, more lately. I'll be honest with you. Before before you started talking about this stuff, um, I was unaware of there being a divide for you. I actually thought that you were uh, 
inclusive into at least the Grant Cameron side of 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 the field, right? Um, you know that that you that you were considered one of them. Um, you know, cause, cause I see you on panels where they, they, they certainly treat you that way. They talk yeah. to you that way. Right. Yeah. Grant, and so, Grant takes so I was care kind of, of me. yeah, no, no, it, it, yeah, <clears throat> very much so. And, um, and, and, and I think it's, I, and honestly, I think it's all very, I think it's all very mutually, I think it's all very mutual and it's very earned. I, I think, I think, you know, you all do respect each other and, and you like working together. Um, and so, so part of me, I, I guess the reason why I bring it up is part of me wonders if, you know, if if maybe you know maybe there's even another group that's even even a worse position right like um you know cuz you know like in the in the US we have this problem where we have this upper middle class right that you know do very well compared to the rest of the country um but still don't have a lot of extra money to throw around right mm -hmm. and but they're very different than the real middle class right and the real middle class are the people that are are living paycheck to paycheck right and and just you know barely you know just barely keeping their head above water right and and so part of me wonders if maybe you know if maybe you know are you really more of an upper middle class right because you do have those relationships with the with the you know with the with the gods on the mountain sort of a thing right and and it seems very mutual and it seems very peer based. Um, and you know, are there even are there others that are are getting squeezed even harder than you are? Um, that that are in in the real middle class. Um, because I mean, there's a there's a lot of people in the field and there's a lot of people in the field that have been in the field for a long time, um, who've been doing a lot of really good work that have never ever ever gotten their 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 time right. They've never ever gotten their chance. Um, you know, even, even, even the, the individual we've been talking about, that's kind of gone, you know, cuckoo banana bread on you. Um, you know, like that's someone who's been do doing this for a long time and he's worked hard, you know, and, uh, and, you know, it's never really gone anywhere, you know, um, uh, you know, it's starting to change for some people, um, you know, um, alien scientist, Jeremy's a, a good example of someone who was just l languishing forever and, and really in the last year and a half, his, he's really kind of taken off finally. Um, but there's a lot of people that have just sat in obscurity for a long time, you know, and just kept chugging away, you know. No, oh, abs absolutely. Alien Scientist is a it's a great example of that. Like I've seen him griping on Twitter, the same gripe I had with many members of the TTSA. You know, he's doing it with Avi Loeb. He's like, I got 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I got a lot of people paying attention to my show. Avi Loeb, why won't you call me on my come on my show? But I'm seeing you on all these uh, these 20, 30 subscriber podcasts. Like, what's going on? And it's a legitimate question. It, it is. really is. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> or or like we've talked about where where you see Luis Elizondo going on all these small podcasts and dropping absolute major bombshells about UFOs. Yeah. 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 You know, and, and, and you know, like, yeah, no, he's, he's an, he's an interesting one because, um, you know, he, I, I started paying more attention after you and I talked about it at one point and, um, you know, I really noticed that, you know, he, 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 he's, he's looking for diamonds in the rough and, um, and when he finds them, he, he, he drops more Easter eggs. It's kind of funny. Like there's this guy, um, over in Europe, um, Max, Oh, I forget Max's name. I feel bad, Max, because I like your show. Um, and uh, and he's done a couple stellar interviews with Lou. I mean, really good. And and you know, basically, other than his interviews with Lou, I had never seen anything this guy had done. Right? You know, I mean, I understand he's got he's got a, a decent following, in, I think he's in Denmark. Um, but um, you know, it, it's. Um, you know, it, it's interesting the way that's the way that's played out. And I think, unfortunately, like as we talked about, Lou's kind of a, a, a an unfortunate example because he's he's really making amends um, for for, I agree for with the you. way that that, you know, uh, TTA moded him, you know, built this yeah. mode around him. But um, but the, but the, the, the message stands. And, and the thing that I, I the thing that I really wonder is, is, you know, like for the, um, you know, for the, you know, for the people who are these for these small groups that are getting the interviews how are they getting them right I'm, i mean and i'm not asking because i want to steal their methods i'm honestly just curious like i'm i'd love to be able to look at 
um, look at you know a, a spreadsheet of 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 what methods people employ to get people on their shows and do some kind of a contrast between them and see you know are there any you know stark differences in how you do it versus someone else does it and um, and you know ultimately the challenge too is that you know part of what we're talking about here is you know you you getting people on or 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 Jeremy getting people on that um ha- a lot of other people have had on right and mm-hmm. and that and that's cool to a degree because like for me I like your interview style I I like I like the way you treat your guests and so I'll see someone interviewed on you know like fade the black or whatever right and I'll and I'll look forward to that person being interviewed on your show because I I know how much more I'm going to get out of that guest on your show than I did on another show. Right. Because of, of the way you interview. And so it, it's nice to see like the same person interviewed on multiple uh, shows because you do get different angles to it, but really where, where your show shines. And, and I would, I would say grant is the same way is when you find these people out <clears throat> of freaking nowhere. I mean, people that are not being interviewed on any other shows, um, they're not being they're, they're they're complete unknowns and they pop out like you've had a couple Bigfoot people on in the last couple months that have blown my mind with their knowledge. Oh, absolutely. And that's, and it's that's credit awesome. to the booking team. Oh, very much so. Very, you very know, much so. That's credit very, to the booking so. team. Oh, by the way, I'm going to drop for it because everybody always hears us talking about Swamp Dweller here. Um, I'm going to drop his YouTube link. This is literally what I listen to every night before I go to bed. I'm literally, I got my, uh, my headphones on when I fall asleep. And so this is uh, Swamp Dweller's uh, YouTube channel. I highly, I highly recommend all of our listeners to, to uh, <clears throat> subscribe to his channel as well. However, it, it's I, amazing I would add entertainment. That. It, Amazing. It is. And I, I, I completely endorse everything you said, except for the part about listening to it right before you go to sleep. I, <laughs> I, I, I want to caution some people that there are certain episodes. Oh, man. Are, some of them are long. Some of them are like, he'll, he'll go on for like, you know, an hour and a half. And like, you know, it'll be like, you know, it, you know, kind of scary story, kind of, you know, and then like, oh my God, that was horrible. You know, and like, I don't, oh, absolutely. I don't know if my, I want my subconscious hearing that while I'm sleeping. I don't know what kind of dreams I'm going to oh, get man. I'll tell you the, the stories of his that scare the living crap out of me are the, are the, are the park ranger ones. And yeah. I'm telling you, uh, he has convinced me that that is a job I would never, ever want. I yeah. will never <laughs> in my yeah. life if I'm ever re- if reincarnation is real, I'm sending a message to my future life: never become a park ranger, ever. Yeah, uh, I know. That's just I know. bad it, news it's for actually, the weird shit to come out. It, it's also it's also made me feel a little better because I I my family we we would go camping pretty much you know at least once a year all growing up. And so I, I camped all up and down California and uh, mostly in the Santa Cruz mountain, like it's like big basin type places, but camped all over the place. Although big basin was always our favorite. And, uh, and, you know, you know, being a little kid growing up, you know, I spent many a night laying in a tent, you know, couldn't sleep hearing all sorts of sounds in the forest. At one point being damn sure that a Bigfoot was going to come rip a hole in my tent and, you know, scare myself to death. And, and as I grew up, I felt like, you know, how silly that was. And now I'm listening to Swamp Daryl going, I was right. I was totally right. Like that's dangerous being out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, some of those hey, You can't mess here. around with that stuff. That oh. stuff is terrible. It's, it's just, you know? oh, it's, it's And crazy. thanks Swamp Dweller for scaring the sh- the crap out of us on a nightly basis. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. 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 Um, but you know, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I, so, I mean, I think it's kind of an interesting problem because I think, I think that, you know, from, from one point of view, there is the, the challenge of, of, of getting, of getting the same level of access to guests and getting the same level of, of respect from guests that come on that you know that that talk up your show as much as they do say other shows so that that's one aspect of it and i think to a certain degree that that problem can be 
perhaps lowered on the priority list because ultimately I think you show more value when you interview people that no one else interviews, right? And and I think that might be a better way of, of mitigating that problem. But outside of that part, there's still just the general issue of, you know, you've been, you know, you've been basically putting out this, um, you know, uh, all for one, one for all, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, methodology, and you've been doing it for a while. And while you, you do it very naturally, because you, you, believe that's the right way to build a community and you and you've 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 had enough experience to know what the the value of building that kind of community um but it's still work and, and it's still putting yourself out there and you've been doing it for a long time and it's not being reciprocated and um you know it, it's 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 a very reasonable thing for you to ask why right is it is it that this community doesn't want that level of, of interaction between their people? I don't know, <coughs> no. Right? You know, is I, it, is I, it I, that, you know, there's something wrong with you? You smell bad? No, I, yeah, I, doubt I don't that. think it's I mean, that. I don't what think is it's that. It, you know? I think it's comfortability. And I think it's comfortability that uh, the two big shows in the game, uh, Coast to Coast and Jimmy, they've been around forever. People are comfortable with them. Uh, Jimmy, formerly of Coast to Coast, probably brought a who has an incredible radio voice probably yeah. brought a lot of his uh, th those coast listeners over to his to his channel and good on him for doing that that's yeah. great broadcasting yep. Yep. okay yep, and um, and okay so all the old guard is used to those two all right all the new guard the young guns whatever you want to call them, for the most part, the majority of them uh, have been overlooked by a lot of the members of the senior guard and not really engaged between the two yep. that they just said, screw it, we're doing it ourselves. And now what you're seeing is if, if you look, you're seeing all of these little clicks that are growing. So yep. for instance... Richard Dolan and in, in finally giving credibility to people is as uh, it, you know, he's now working alongside like when he holds one of his pay-per-view events. Okay. It's him, it's Elizondo and it's three or four young guns. Yep. All right. And a couple of them, you really question about their information. Yep. Especially one young European guy who tried to uh, make a fool out of me uh, when I called him out for using my, my programming on his channel that's monetized. Ooh. Ooh. All right. You have George Ooh. Knapp doing the exact same thing with Jeremy Corbell and others, Danny Silva, Joe Mergia. All right. You have you have the debrief, which has taken a lot of these people, these young people, and brought them into a big platform right off the bat. So Normally, nobody would, everybody would be like, oh, crap, crap, another platform. But now they're looking at saying, well, you're tied to Tim McMillan in the debrief. Well, we, we better support you because we support Tim. Yep. Okay. And Tim yep. has done a yep. great job. And I love Tim McMillan. He has done a great job at, at uh, moving the ball forward in this field. Yep. Right? And it helps all of us, right? Because if, if, if he mentors them correctly, and if they're smart enough to listen mm -hmm. and learn from him, then if if they all survive and if they all continue doing this in the future, we're going to get higher quality content out of them mm -hmm. because of what they learned mm -hmm. from Tim, right? The, and that, that, that benefits all is, of us. Here's the problem with the young guard. The old guard is jaded, okay? Yes. They still got their sources and everything. The old guard is jaded. <clears throat> the new guard... The problem with a lot of the new guard, not all of them, but a good chunk of them, okay, the majority of them, is they all don't care about the narratives. You know, as as Danny Silva has stated publicly, okay, and I'm a big fan of Danny's, but Danny has stated, I don't care if there's a narrative just as long as the story gets out. They're more concerned with UFOs being real than the cover-ups that are happening along with it. 
<clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that's interesting. It's interesting you bring that up because I, I got to say that I think, um, you know, I, I think I'm almost, I think I'd almost consider myself to be in the same boat. Um, it, it, it's not that I don't care about the narrative. Like I, I personally find it interesting, but I don't think there's anything I can do about it. And I don't think there's anything anyone can do about it. And so it's, it's, I would rather no, focus on things that, that I can, that I can, that, that, I can that can impact. And that, and that John is exactly what we're doing. We're not leaving the subject alone. It doesn't mean that we're not, we're going to stop interviewing people like Tim McMillan or Lou Elizondo or Sean Cahill <clears throat> or Grant Cameron or, or Melinda Leslie or, or whomever. We're not going to stop doing that. But what we are going to do behind the scenes is, is we're going to be telling these people that when they come up to us and they say, okay, uh, we have a conference coming up. Would you like to, would you like to host so, uh, some of our people to get the word out? Yeah, we can't do that. Can't do that. Right? You can buy time on Spaced Out Radio. We can negotiate if you want us and our and our uh, ever growing audience to to come on out and to your event. That's great. That's great. We can do that, but there's go it's got to be either we have to be involved one way or another or we have to be monetized. That's only fair. We're just not giving away free airtime anymore. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, and you know, and and you know, it's really interesting. The more I think about it, you know, like, you know, like, like in, like in, for example, in the tech world, right? We have we have partner programs, right? And Good night, the Sasquatch. Pro- <laughs> night. Um, we have partner programs, and the partner programs are are very. There's a lot of thought. And a lot of money that goes into developing these partner programs. And there's whole teams of people, right? Like, you know, especially for a big partner, like, you know, for like an IBM, you might have a, a, seriously, like a 20 person department that does nothing but the partner program with IBM, you know? And, and basically everyone comes up with kind of a, a rules of engagement, right? Like, this is what we can do for you. This, these are the sort of things we expect in return. And, and you know, there, there's kind of a, there's a negotiation. It, it's fairly formal in a way. I mean, it's not, but it is in a way, right? Yeah. And, and, and part of me wonders if, if essentially just due to the, due to the, the starving musician style that, of, that ufology grew up in, if, if essentially that's what we need, we, we need someone to step up and say, look, you know what, we're going to start organizing get togethers between these these different groups of people we're going to start you know notifying each other when we find someone new that's really impressive we're going to start you know we're going to start engaging in a more formal way um and 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 really kind of and and define it you know and and step out and define it and say look this is what we think it should be like i said it's nothing personal against any individual in this field it's not like that at all Okay, but when we keep getting overlooked, all right. So, for instance, when I'm sitting at a Toronto conference, okay, that MUFON Canada put on, and I'm the only journalist at speaking at that conference, trained journalist, and I'm not invited onto the panel about journalism. When's the mainstream media going to going to uh, pick up this story? right? That's, there's a clear example. There's a clear example of what I'm saying. And it makes me scratch my head. Like here I am, the only one who's actually worked in mainstream media, who understands how a newsroom works in this field or at that conference. And I'm not even asked on the panel for a media conference. And I mean, have you ever have you ever talked to Grant? Has Grant had any sort of a similar experience at any point in his career? Like, has he ever felt like an outsider? Ever? Yeah. Uh, you know, I talked to Grant about it. I talked to David Weatherly about it, and they all experience it. See, on the East Coast, maybe it's because you're Canadian. No, no, <laughs> it's not that. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Um, I'm joking. What it is is these conferences are are popping up left, right, and center. Okay. So in the East, for instance, here's the real interesting part about the East Coast. 
if you go look, if you go look at um, at uh, the paranormal conferences on the East Coast, so let's say Central Time to East Coast, and you go look at their lineups, like all the big ones, they're all the same people. And all of their groupies follow the conference to conference. Yeah, it's like, it's like a tour. Like conference it, it, season like shows up, and and you you go on the road for three months, right? Like absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, and I just want look. In the end, we're also about protecting our listeners. We're protecting our listeners from the BS. We're protecting our listeners from those who are taking advantage. You know, I'm not going to go out there like other shows and slam people publicly. I'm not. Okay? I'm not going to go, you know, say this guy's a liar, this guy's a fake, this guy is no, this, but, but this you can guy speak is that. volumes by who you book <clears throat> and 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 how often you book them. Absolutely. Right? Like, you know, I mean that that can speak volumes and and part of that does actually protect you as well because I mean I'll, I'll tell you um, you know, like, um, you know, a, a perfect example is, you know, th that, um, you know, those two, those, you know, those two other big shows that you mentioned before, what's turned me off of both of them at, at periods of time is when one of them either has not been discerning enough about their guests and they've had a guest on that I know for a fact due to my own personal connections mm -hmm. is not, is not credible. And I find it very unlikely that they're not aware of those things. Mm -hmm. And I listen to them, talk to them, and I'm like, you're giving them more than just courteous respect. You're, well, I mean, you're really enjoying it. Mean, that bothers me, you know? We, I'll give you an example. We have a list of people that will never appear on this show. We do. I don't mention who they are because of course. No, that starts drama. The only one I ever mention, the only one I ever mention is Dr. Stephen Greer. He's because he's the first person that I ever rescinded an interview request to because of his demands to get him on the air. Okay, you know how rock stars have have this list of demands for every arena they go into? <laughs> I got that list of demands. I need only and, red MMs. Question, <laughs> question number one is will Dr. Greer be paid for this interview? <clears throat> uh, I said no. Uh, number two was, can you send us the demographics of your audience and all of the areas where this show will be, or where it will be, uh, played, including well, pod well, well. Cast, <laughs> podcast destinations. <laughs> what is the difference between, and I provided that, what is the difference in, in men versus women who are listening in? Uh, wow. I thought that was a great question. I answered that. Hi, Glenn, John McEnroe. How are you? Uh, um, where I shut the, where I shut it down was when they asked me to provide a list of questions that I would like to ask Dr. Greer. And that's where I said, you know what? No, we're done. We're done. God, you know, and the thing is that so much of this, it, it's all, it's all so more about how you do it than what you do. Cause you know, like, you know, you take someone, you know, you take someone like me, for example, right. Where, you know, I, I, I've been, I've been involved in a lot of different areas, right. So I can talk on a lot of different things. So I might reach out to someone and be like, Hey, can I just get some guidance as to what we're going to be talking about? You know, just some ballpark, just so I can prepare, you know, sort of thing. Right. I mean, that sort of thing like is, is totally normal or, or even, you know, even, even if I, even if I said to someone, look, you know, this is a topic that's, that's really uh, brutal for me at the moment and it's really sensitive. And so, you know, if you, if you could be cognizant of that and, and you, you know, <laughs> treat me gently, you know, sort of a thing, right? Like there's so many things you can do to mitigate that problem without saying, I'd like a list of all the questions that you're going to ask me before the show. It's like, come oh, on. Trust me, dude. Trust me. I, I see it. And, and, you know, if, if, if the listeners, if the listeners, and I want to get to Joe's question here first, okay? I wonder. Which is, was Art Bell ever asked to a conference? I And I'm going to be honest with you, Joe. I don't know the answer to that. 
And Joe is one of my longest serving listeners. He's been listening since 2015, 2016. And uh, I love Joe and and him and and you know you it's know, a good question. It would be worth looking but, into that. But I but I don't know. I honestly don't know the answer to that because you know a lot of people are not aware of of all of the um, of all of the drama that happened with Art um, in the, in the latter half of his of his career. You know, and and honestly, a lot of it I'm mm -hmm. unaware of. I just get hints of it here and there. Um, and, um, but, you know, I mean, you know, he, he definitely, um, he definitely had his, his struggle with the, with the community and, 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 um, yeah. you know, and it, he, you know, he was not happy with how, how it went at times. And, um, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was actually funny. There was a guy who called into, um, into Fade the Black the other day that claims that he is a medium and that he, um, has been channeling Art Bell. And okay. he claims that he's going to be launching a new podcast where um, it's it's going to be Art Bell oh, doing no. a podcast. Yeah. And uh, and so it's so so it was, it was awesome. Jimmy, you know, and this is one of Jimmy's call in nights. And, and, and Jimmy's really good about being kind to people on the phone when they call in. And and so he's like, so 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 art's going to be your co-host. Like that, right? And the guy's like, "No, no, no, no! I'm the co-host. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just running defense. This is art show, <laughs> right?" <laughs> and so, <laughs> but then the best part was was that then Jimmy busts out with, "Oh, well, you know, actually, I don't, I don't really know if, if he's going to want me on. Like, uh, you know, art wasn't very happy with me in the end. Like, yeah, he got really upset with me when I went on, went on, went on the coast to coast, and 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 he wouldn't talk to me in the end. So I don't really know. And so it was so funny because like it sounded so nutty, and then you could catch Jimmy at one point going, "Well, God, if this is true, what if this is really true? Shit, the last time we talked, we didn't get along very well." <laughs> it was it's it was true. an amazing exchange. <clears throat> it was awesome. No, it it, it, it it's completely true. I mean, I mean. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> I really don't know how to respond to that. And, and the guys even talk about the fact that, that you know, that, that art's having trouble acclimating to the other side and that, um, that, you know, that, you know, he, he's, he's, he's having to, to build his confidence up a little bit to do this. And, and, um, and, um, and uh, yeah. And, um, and we'll see, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, all I, I know mean, is I hope arts, uh, widowed wife Aaron if he starts a podcast and starts monetizing it I hope she uh files a lawsuit against oh, that that's an interesting situation isn't it huh huh I what how does that that play would be out? awesome how that would be that, awesome you know that that happened like like um I, I don't know if, I don't know if any of you are, are scooby-doo fans but um you know, there's um, you know, there, there's a there was a whole season um of Scooby Doo where they did uh, guest appearances, right? So it was like, you know, the the mamas and the papas and and well, it was Harlem like, um, Globe Trotters, Harlem Globe Trotters, and and uh, and you know, like um, a share and you know, and all these ones, right? And uh, and and my favorite one is this one where um, the, uh, where the theme song is Pretty Mary Sunshine, right? And it's sung by um. Uh, oh. I can't remember the guy's name at the moment, but the, the trucker guy was in, from yeah, the yeah, trucker from, from, from Smokey and the Bandit. Exactly, exactly. <clears throat> That's the dude, right? And um, and the reason why that episode didn't appear when any of the when those shows were ever released was because his family would not license his voice. And this guy's been gone for a long time, right? And it's like, wow, that yeah, Phyllis Diller and Don. Oh, Don Knotts was awesome. Don, oh yeah, Jerry, Jerry Reed. Reed. Thank, you. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, Jerry Reed. Yep, yep, yep. And I mean, and that guy, that guy was an amazing, amazing musician. I mean, just, I mean, just amazing musician. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, that was, um, yeah, no, but yeah, it's, it's a little Scooby Doo lore for you. Um, uh, John, John Poe has a question. Do you think anyone will ever talk about abductions from Congress or the government? No. Even if aliens arrive. They will not talk that subject. So yeah, I don't. 
you know, to me, like I was just talking to someone about this the other day, you know, to me, this field's very interesting because, you know, when you first get into it, it's very shallow. It's only about two or three feet deep for a little boys, but it doesn't transition slowly. It's like two or three feet for a ways. And then suddenly it drops to 200 feet. And then you get a little bit further and there's no bottom that anyone knows about yet. Right. And, and that's the challenge is that, you know, once you've been researching this for a while, and even when you get, I mean, you know, you can get from the propulsion stuff to the consciousness stuff and yeah, it gets, it, it can get a little wooey, right. Especially if you start really opening your mind up to like the medium stuff and, and because you, you, you get pulled into the NDE stuff, there's no, there's no choice about that. Right. But once you jump into the, to the abduction stuff, it gets different yep. real quick. And um, quick. and the thing is, is that there is, there is a story, and I don't remember who who originally tells this story. Yeah, the snowman. Um, who originally tells this story? But there is a story that's been told about a, um, a, a, a government official that was actually abducted from his vehicle. And was actually interrogated and treated badly by a group of aliens. And I can't remember who used to tell that story, but that story used to get told. God, I remember who that was. But, um, but you know, but the thing is, is that if you think about it, what there's like 435 members of the house. And, um, and so statistically, at least one of them has been abducted, right? Um, and so, you know, it, it would be interesting. It would be it would be flat out interesting if one of those guys actually stepped up and, and talked about their experience. That would be that would be that would be a game changer. <laughs> it totally that would. would. Be, that would be <clears throat> a game changer, right? And I'll be honest, like, I really think I really think it's possible that yeah, the, the liability of everything before 2004 is certainly is certainly a challenge right i mean ultimately that that's why the jfk stuff can't get released right um matter of fact some of that is is specifically fought for by the the johnson family um uh they they will come in and they will they will influence um a negative negative uh media about about him um, and so there, you know, so, so yeah, of course there's liability, right. And, and that is some of it, but let's face it. You go back to Roswell, there's, there's no one alive that was active during Roswell. Right. So, you know, there's no, there's no direct liability, right. Like, you know, as far as like, you know, like civil lawsuits and so forth. And so I think part of the other, the other big aspect of it is, is that, you know, a lot of Americans, and I don't know about Canadians, but a lot of Americans live in this real fantasy land about how much protection they get when they're when they're sleeping in their house at night in their in, in their in their neighborhood how much protection do they really get and most of us think we get far more protection than we actually do right when you really get down to it police officers don't usually care about crimes until after they're committed right we don't do crime prevention we do crime analysis and recovery right like you, you will never find a product that, that is focused on the prevention of stealing your car. It's always about recovery of your car. Right. And, right. and I, and I think that essentially when, even though like none of us are quite as protected as we think they are, I think when it becomes a real public topic that, and this is assuming you believe this is all true, but if you believe that there are people being abducted, and you 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 hear some of the stories about you know um, husbands and wives who have separated because one of them was getting abducted, the other one couldn't stop it from happening, and and destroyed themselves over the fact they couldn't protect their spouse, right? That nobody could stop it from happening, right? And and when it comes out that, that this is going on and the government can't help you, they can't stop it. That's that might be a bigger issue than the liability of what was done that may be a bigger concern than 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 anything else because i don't know how you deal with that right honestly like, i don't know how you get up there and go and we hope you don't get abducted but just so you know if you do don't call us because <laughs> we can't do anything about it i mean how well is that going to go over right we're supposed to have sovereign skies 
I mean, that's that's a tough topic. Oh, I hear you. I hear you there, my friend. And on that note, I just wanted to explain that question. I don't even think Justin is still listening in. But uh, we're going to call it the night here. We're not going to do another two hours, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I got to work in the morning. But, uh, John, thank you so much uh, uh, my for pleasure, your time. Sir. Always my appreciate pleasure, you. I uh, want to say a big thank you to our um, to our uh, super chatters tonight. Fabster, Flash, uh, Black Dragon times two, Deanna, Patrick, Michael, Cat Chaser, Murray, and uh, Iberata, Swampy, and uh, Adam. Thank you so much for the love and support that you guys give us on Spaced Out Radio. And Dave, just real quick. Yeah. Uh, Dave, David, um, uh, I posted it in my recap of the episode. So if you go to my Twitter um, handle, you can find a link to all that stuff on Angeli. It's all in there. Yeah. And uh, thank you for that. You do a great job with that, John. You're always uh, on the uh, unbiased UFO report. And uh, big thank you to all the veterans who have tuned on in throughout the week. Uh, don't forget Lynn Wallington on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, she will be having on uh, tomorrow night. It's going to be Eric Mitchell. And then on Sunday uh, from MUFON Canada, Dave Palachik, the head of MUFON Canada. So it's going to be uh, a great weekend of ET and UFO talk with Lynn. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, we got great shows coming up. I will be back on Monday with Mark Shaw talking JFK, Marilyn Monroe, and Dorothy Kilgallen. So it'll be a great show that night. Big thank you to each and every one of you tuning us in, all the regulars in the chat room. We love you, and uh, thank you to all the new subscribers this week. We really do appreciate uh, you accepting our paychecks for all the subscribers we're buying. So thank you so much. Really appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you all.